Quran, Allah says he has created all humanity from a pair of female and male, um, Adam and Eve, and then he has placed us into tribes and nations. So despite our uh, differences and whatever those differences may be, we all come from Adam and Eve and then we are one big family. This multiculturalism is much easier to observe in some places more than others. For example, here at my home, Canada, and Canada is definitely one of the most exemplary countries in the world with its mosaic. So in today's episode of Embracing Ramadan, we'll talk about fasting Ramadan in a multicultural context. Enjoy. Ya Jameel, Ya Allah, Ya Qareeb, Ya Allah, Ya Mujib, Ya Allah, Ya Habib, Ya Allah, Ya Ra'oof, Ya Allah, Ya Atuf, Ya Allah, Ya Ma'roof, Ya Allah, Ya Latif, Ya Allah, يا عظيم يا الله يا حنان يا الله يا منان يا الله يا ديان يا الله يا سبحان يا الله يا أمان يا الله يا برهان يا الله يا سلطان يا الله يا مستعان يا الله يا محسن يا الله يا متعال يا الله يا رحمن يا الله يا رحيم يا الله يا كريم يا الله يا مجيد يا الله يا فرد يا الله يا وتر يا الله يا أحد يا الله يا صمد يا الله يا محمود يا الله يا صادق الوعد يا الله يا علي يا الله يا غني يا الله يا شافي يا الله يا كافي يا الله يا معافي يا الله يا باقي يا الله يا هادي يا الله يا قادر يا الله يا ساتر يا الله يا قهار يا الله يا جبار يا الله يا غفار يا الله يا فتاح يا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَى لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْا أَعْمَالَهُمْ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعاديات ضبحا فالموريات قدحا فالمغيرات صبحا فأثرن به نقعا فوسطن به جمعا إن الإنسان لربه لكنود وإنه على ذلك لشهيد وإنه لحب الخير لشديد أفلا يعلم إذا بعثر ما في القبور وحصل ما في الصدور إن رب 
ربهم بهم يومئذ لخبير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم القارعة ما القارعة وما أدراك ما القارعة يوم يكون الناس كالفراش المبثوث وتكون الجبال كالعهن المنفوش فأما من ثقلت موازينه فهو في عيشة راضية وأما من خفت موازينه فأمه هاوية وما أدراك ما هي نار حامية صدق الله العظيم Hi everyone and welcome to the Ramadan Story Corner. Today's story is about a companion of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who did an honorable job hosting a guest. So the story is narrated by Abu Huraira. Uh, may Allah be pleased with him. And so what happens is one day a man approaches Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he says that he is struck with hunger and that he needs something to eat. Hearing this, Prophet sends someone to his wife to ask if uh, there is anything that he can offer this man. And his wife says, surely uh, by the truth of, of, of the person who sent you, I have nothing in this house except for water. And so the messenger comes back and the Prophet then sends him to his other wife. And she says the same thing. The Prophet sends him to his other wives and they all say the same thing. They have nothing but water in their house. And so what the Prophet does is then he asks his companions, he says, is there anyone here who can take this man as a guest for tonight for dinner? And so one of the companions of the Prophet from the Ansar raises his hand and he says, Oh Prophet, I will take him tonight. And so he takes the man to his house and when he comes home he goes directly to his wife and he says, do we have anything to eat at home that we can offer this man? And she says, we have nothing except a little bit of food for the children unfortunately. And so he says, okay, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you to play with the kids, to distract them with games. And if they ask for food, put them to sleep. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll extinguish the lights, we'll put the dinner on the table, and we'll pretend like we're eating so that the man has enough to eat. And so that's what they do. Uh, the woman puts the kids to sleep and then pretends to knock over the candle so that uh, the guest does not realize that while they're eating, while he's eating, uh, the man and the woman are putting the spoons to the bowl but not taking anything from it, and that it's just him who, who is eating. And so that night, the man uh, has his needs satisfied, he's very thankful, the children and the man and the woman are all hungry. The next day, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, approaches the companion and says, What did you do last night? What did you do that Allah admired so much that He sent a verse from the Holy Quran about you and what you did? And when the companion explains what happened, the Prophet Muhammad is very touched. And the verse from the Quran is as following. It's uh, Surah 76. Verse 8, and they give food in spite of their love for it or for their love of him to the poor, the orphan, and the captive. And the other verse is 
Surah 59, verse 9, and give them preference over themselves, even though they were in need of that. Happy Ramadan, everyone. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا من لا ملك إلا ملكه يا من لا يحصي العباد ثناءه يا من لا تصف الخلائق جلاله يا من لا يدرك الأبصار كماله يا من لا يبلغ الأفهام صفاته يا من لا ينال الأفكار كبرياءه يا من لا يحسن الإنسان نعوته يا من لا يرد العباد قضاءه يا من ظهر في كل شيء آياته سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان نجنا من النار يا حبيب البكائين يا سند المتوكلين يا هادي المضلين يا ولي المؤمنين يا أنيس الذاكرين يا أقدر القادرين يا أبصر الناظرين يا أعلم العالمين يا مفزع الملهوفين يا أنصر الناصرين سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان نجنا من النار وأسألك بأسمائك يا مكرم يا معظم يا منعم يا معطي يا مغني يا محي يا مبدئ يا مرضي يا منجي يا محسن سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان نجنا من النار يا كافي كل شيء يا قائما على كل شيء يا من لا يشبهه شيء يا من لا يزيد في ملكه شيء يا من لا ينقص من خزائنه شيء يا من لا يخفى عليه شيء يا من ليس كمثله شيء يا من بيده مقاليد كل شيء يا من وسعت رحمته كل شيء يا من يبقى ويفنى كل شيء سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان نجنا من النار يا من لا يعلم الغيب إلا هو يا من لا يصرف السوء إلا هو يا من لا يدبر الأمر إلا هو يا من لا يغفر الذنوب إلا هو يا من لا يقلب القلوب إلا هو يا من لا يخلق الخلق إلا هو يا من لا يتم النعمة إلا هو يا من لا ينزل الغيث إلا هو يا من لا يحيي الموتى إلا هو يا من لا يغني على التحقيق إلا هو سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان نجنا من النار Welcome everyone to the guest corner Time is flying and Ramadan is passing with all its beauty 
I'm not welcoming you inside the studio sitting on the comfy chairs today as we do every day for each episode. I'm out on the street to the witness of great job community people have done for Ramadan. People not only from Muslim community, I also see people from different faith groups are sharing Ramadan beauty hand by hand, shoulder by shoulder. I have policy makers, including member of parliament, mayor of the city and city councillor who are contributing Ramadan beauty by giving their time. I would like to take you there. Let's get started. I have Mayor John Tory with me today. So Mr. John Tory, we are going to talk about the Ramadan and the importance of living in a peaceful society. So as a mayor, so we have uh, different religious celebrations from Diwali to Easter, Christmas to Ramadan. So what do you think about the importance of religious celebrations to keep society in peace and harmony? Well, I think first of all, those celebrations are important to people who celebrate them. So for Muslims, Ramadan is important. For Christians, Easter is important. And what is also important in a place like Toronto, though, where we have so many people of different faiths living together, is that we all understand and celebrate each other's holidays. And so I've learned about Ramadan. I've learned about sacrifice. I've learned, uh, you know, about giving to others through watching and participating in Ramadan uh, observances and, and watching projects like this, Project Ramadan, which is all about giving to other people. And I think that the more people learn, for example, about the Islamic faith and the fact that one of the most important parts of it is to give to others and to give to the community, um, then that's a good thing for the community. And, and uh, so that's why I come out to support these things, because this city is all about people living here peacefully and loving each other and celebrating the differences we have from one another and not heading in the direction the rest of the world is heading, which seems to be one where people are polarized and divided based on their differences. They shouldn't be. And we're all human beings and this is a great example of people helping people. What would be your message to Muslims and other people, non-Muslims, all over the world? Well, my message would be to people of all faiths, reach out to each other. When you have a Project Ramadan, as they do here at the Muslim Welfare Center, invite people from other faiths to come and be part of it. They'll want to come. They'll want to join in understanding more about Ramadan, but they'll also want to join uh, in helping their community and helping those who are struggling. And I think that's a fundamental core value of Toronto, is that we help each other, and it doesn't matter what our faith is, it doesn't matter what our skin color or our nationality is, we help each other. And so I would just say, no matter what your faith is, reach out to somebody of a different faith, or even reach out to people in your own faith and help other people who who are struggling because I think that's a you know really a foundation part of who we are in the city. You are going to have your own iftar dinner, I think. I'm having my iftar dinner, and also this year on the day of my iftar dinner, I'm going to be fasting. And I've never fasted before uh, during Ramadan, but I'm going to fast this year so that I, I can experience uh, the sacrifice that's involved. I've had people tell me, of course, that by the end of the day, uh, when iftar uh, comes, that you're you know you're very mindful of the sacrifice you've made over the course of the day. Well, I'm going to experience it for myself, and it's another way in which I can show myself solidarity and respect for uh, not only for the Muslim community but also for Ramadan itself. I have Jennifer McCalvey. She's the city councillor. So McCalvey, welcome to our program. Thank you. So I would like to ask you, what does Ramadan mean to you? Well, to me, Ramadan is a time of hope and peace, and certainly it's a time where I see the Muslim community coming together to do such amazingly good things for our community of Scarborough Rouge Park. What do you think the importance of uh, religious celebrations in a multi-faith society? Well, I'm very lucky to live in the community of Scarborough Rouge Park, which is one of the most diverse in the entire country, and perhaps even in the world. And to me, it's a time where I see communities of different faith coming together to celebrate, and it's in the spirit of hope and peace. So what would be your message to Muslims and non-Muslims all over the world? Well, thank you. I think my first message is thank you. It's events like here today where I see how much you're contributing, not just to the Muslim community, but also for Scarborough, for Toronto, and for the entire country. What do you think about the importance of uh, religious celebrations to keep people in peace and society? And where do you work? So, when it comes to the, this great province of Ontario, we celebrate all the faith, including uh, Ramadan. And when it comes to, as uh, policy makers, as elected officials, uh, it is our duty that we make sure we protect all the faith, we protect all the religion, and we make sure uh, our next generation uh, grow up in a peaceful environment in this province, in this great country. Because as, as young leaders, uh, as one of the young millennial MPP, my job is to make sure 
uh, doesn't matter matter where they preach, where they, where they pray, doesn't matter what their skin color is, what is ma doesn't matter what language they speak, is our job is to protect them and to make sure they can pray in peace and we protect all these faith so that way our young generation when they in Canada they get they always have each other's back. So in, when it comes to Canadians, we expect every each one of us to uh, take care of each other and that's what the Canadian values is and when it comes to Ramadan um, I, I am looking forward to celebrate uh, in a grandier way with my friends my colleagues and my constituents in Scarborough Rouge Park. What would be your suggestions or uh, your advice to young people living in a multi-faith society? So young folks in our society, they are not the leaders of tomorrow, they are the leaders of today. When I see that many young folks from different backgrounds, especially from Muslim background, working so hard to feed the Canadians here, it shows that their leadership. It shows how this community, Muslim community, give that leadership role to young generation. And they are our future, so I'm very happy to be here. And I would always, always say they are the, future, they are the current leaders of our society. What does Ramadan mean to you? Well, Ramadan means to me family, diversity and uh, giving. So this is a very, very good cause uh, during Ramadan that we care for the people that are less fortunate regardless of their race, religion or their ethnicity. What would be your message to people all over the world? Well, my message to the people in the world is that we, we should be living in a harmonious world. We should be helping each other, caring for each other, so that we will live a good life together and uh, so, we, so that we can help as many people as we can. And we are the whole big family in the world. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to another episode of International Ramadan TV. I'm your host, Dr. Zehan Rashid, talking once again about healthy lifestyle. I may not have mentioned this, but healthy lifestyle is actually very much what Allah and His Messenger expects from us as believers. We should not be looking to anybody else to figure out why it is that we need to be healthy in our outlook towards time, therefore. Uh, again, uh, I remind myself 
bad management of time in many ways leads us to leading unproductive lives. Uh, time, if it was not important, would not have been mentioned in a surah of the Quran, as you all know, uh, the surah of Al Asr, where Allah has anticipated, has told us the importance of time. Not only that, but the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mentioned in a hadith that two things which are valuable are given to all, but very few utilize it. What are those two valuables? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said these are time, uh, waqt, or uh, as he said, firaq, uh, spare time, uh, free time, and then he said, saha, or good health. So those two things are actually a blessing of God. So if we are not actually using that time that God has given us and we don't know how much that is, then we are actually becoming unproductive and therefore not really being able to use that time well uh, to the benefit of ourselves and others. So how do we go about using that time? I would suggest myself that if we are traveling, for example, and we do travel, most of us, to work or uh, another journey, that we have a plan for this journey. We don't just mindlessly put on the radio or look around you know, unnecessarily and things that actually are of little benefit but we actually have a plan for that time that we're going to have so if I anticipate traveling for 45 minutes listening to the Quran for example listening to a productive conversation or something that would actually motivate me to do something and even if I don't have those two things then I could just quietly be remembering God just doing the dhikr of God that alone becomes actually very productive because it produces a closeness to God which helps the heart become easier and better capable of doing what is necessary to please God. Also, we can carry books with us. If we have the opportunity to sit and we have the ability to be free, we can actually carry a book. So many of my friends appear to be, lack, uh, appear to be lacking in their ability to intellectually improve themselves because they're not reading. And yet we have all this free time when we are traveling that we could be uh, utilizing for reading and therefore becoming intellectually better human beings. Uh, I thank all of you. Until the next time, this is Zehan Rashid, uh, wishing you a very happy and a blessed Ramadan, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> فلقد علمت فلقد علمت بأن عفوك أعظم إن كان لا يرجو إلا محسن فبمن يلوذ ويستجير المجرم أدعو كما أمرت تضرعا فإذا ردت يدي فمن ذا يرحم ما لي إلا الرجاء وجميل عفوك وجميل عفوك ثم إن
أشهد أن لا إله إلا هو أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد الرسول أشهد أن محمد الرسول حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله لا إله إلا هو محمد رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت سيدنا محمد الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجة الرفيعة وابعثه مقاما محمودا الذي وعدت إنك لا تخلف الميعاد Instead of creating the sky blue, the forest green, the flowers pink, orange, purple Allah could have chosen to make everything into one plain single color. So instead of all these vibrant colors, we could have had one pitch black earth, or we could have had a pink one or a white one. But instead of making it plain and boring, Allah decided to add diversity by adding different colors into this beautiful universe. And just like that, our differences and our diversity is what makes this earth of humanity beautiful. So embrace your differences. And don't forget, respect is the glue that holds this whole picture together. So thank you for watching another episode of Embracing Ramadan. See you tomorrow.